competing is a big deal. It's, it's why we train so much. And the more information you can have about how to become a good competitor, the better you can be. We got a great question today about how to balance practice and competition in both discus and shot put. How to handle all the practice you want to do and still be ready for competing. Because you could train really hard all week and kill it, but then not be in a good position to compete on the weekend or, or whenever your week your meet is because you're worn out and tired. And so there's this balancing of how hard you should train, when you should train. And also when, when you're doing both discus and shot put, that adds another component to that. So I'll, I'll first I'll attack if you're throwing both discus and shot put, and a lot of us do, especially if you do the rotation in the shot put, then rotational shot put and discus training are very similar. And throwing the shot put helps your discus and throwing the discus helps your shot put because you're doing the rotational movement and they help each other. If you have a clear favorite or one that you are uh, much better at, then I would do more of that in a week. So let's just say I would do a rough start. Say you're a better shot putter, then maybe you do 60% of your training shot put, 40% of your of your throwing with discus. Um, if they're a little bit more even, or you're still trying to figure out which one's your favorite, you could go 50-50. Um, you could even go as much like, I was very much, I threw both discus and shot put, but I was a way better discus thrower. So I probably did 75% discus, 25% shot put. So that's something you got to figure out, um, but but kind of decide that. So if you're going to have five throwing practices or six throwing practices or four throwing practices a week, then decide uh, which one you're going to do more. And again, if you're doing the rotation and shot put, just remember that doing both helps both. When it comes to your intensity and volume and being ready for a meet, let's just hypothetical um, you have a meet on Saturday, maybe meet on Friday. You want the, the heaviest part of your training to be early in the week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, those are the days where I feel like you're free to kill it, throw a lot, work on technique, um, work, work, work really hard. And then it's those two days out from the meet that you want to be a little bit more careful what you're doing, making sure you're doing your recovery and you're doing your stretching. You don't want to do nothing. But like the, the two days out, you do want to do a little bit less. You want to do things that make you, you feel good, feel explosive, uh, making sure you're getting sleep. And so as long as you are able to, the day before and uh, two days before the meet, back off a little bit on training, you're going to be in good shape come meet day. Because I, I found that it takes about, after you've had really hard training, about the second or third day after the hard training, is when you start to like, I don't know, feel good again and, and feel recovered. And that's how you want to feel on, on meet day. Another thing I'll say with um, preparing for your meet, um, a lot of times, uh, either the day before or two days before the meet, you it's good to run through like a meet simulation. Uh, take practice throws like you're going to throw at the meet. S do the warm up that you're going to do at the meet. And anything you can do to duplicate what you're going to do at the meet in a practice just helps you be more prepared more calm, less surprised, um, less chaotic on meet day, and all of those things um, help with throwing throwing the best that we can. The second question I got is, what kind of mindset do you need to have to be a great thrower, a great competitor, uh, to be able to compete well when you need to? And there's a lot that can go into that statement, um, but there are four, maybe five things that you want to look at to how to become a fierce competitor. And it's more than just being wildly competitive. Although that's good, that's a part of it. You want to be fiercely, fiercely competitive. But if you only have that, you're going to miss out on some things. So the first one is that I think is important to, that enables you to be a fierce competitor is just technical competence, like being able to do the thing. If you go into the ring and don't really know what you're doing, then how can you kill it? How can you go after it? How can you execute really well? Um, you might, but you're, you're going on chance and risk. Um, so to be a fierce competitor, you gotta have technical competence. 
You get that from throwing a lot. So throw a lot and improving your technique as, as your technique and experience in throwing improves, you become a better thrower, a better competitor. That's how that works. The second thing is, and this one can't be faked, um, is experience. So there's a direct correlation. It's kind of what I said in the last one. The more you throw, the more you compete specifically, the better you are at competing. Because there's a whole thing. There's there's rules to follow. There's generally how a track meet, how the, th the throwing events like happen is almost the same every meet, you know? Um, the more times you go through that, then the less surprised you are, the more confident you are, then the more at ease you can be. And really, if you can be at ease, then you can go after it and kill it and throw far. So we've, we've talked about technical competence, uh, experience, and being fiercely competitive. Um, I think another one is having a sound mind. So I think back at times when I both competed well and competed poorly, a huge part of that was my perspective and how I viewed the situation. Let's think about what is a sound mind? It's kind of maybe abstract of a thought. Being lighthearted, like at ease, like like happy. Like th that's a part of being a sound mind. Uh, not, not worried about the outcome of the event. Now, of course, we're at the meet. We want to do our best. We want to throw our farthest. No question about it. But you've got to be able to have that and also be okay with whatever happens. And that's a skill. It's not like you can just turn that off. Um, that's something that is learned, but that's something that you can do is to chill out, be fiercely competitive, try to win, try to beat everybody, try to throw a PR, but also have this reality that you're not in total control of what happens. Um, other people could do things, throw really far. Uh, you could, uh, there's a million scenario, scenarios that can affect how you perform. And so because of that, you're not entirely in control of the outcome, you gotta let the outcome go. This goes back to the first one, uh, just being happy to compete. There's so much, of, the lighter you are, I'm talking a whole like your heart, your mind, your experience, when you're, the way you're interacting with your competitors. If you're angry and mad, got your headphones on and you're just, just all to yourself constantly, uh, that's not the mode you wanna be in. Now, there's a time for that because you're getting psyched and you're getting pumped. But if you avoid people, if you avoid talking to people and push other people away and just kind of alone, that's a bad sign. That's not going to help you. I, I'm, I guess I'm just speaking from experience. I've been in both situations. I've been that guy who's alone in the corner just trying to get psyched. I've also been the guy up and around talking and being lighthearted. Not being not serious, but being lighthearted. And in general, always threw better when I was more relaxed. And the fifth thing I think you can do to help secure, help become a fierce competitor is to know your competition. Um, when you go to a meet, you're gonna know what schools are there. You can find out who the throwers are. You can find out their names. You can find out how far they've thrown. The more information that you have about who you're gonna be throwing against, it goes back to the to having a sound mind. It calms you down. It makes there's then there's no surprises. Because if somebody pops off a big throw that caught you off guard, and now you're a little jittery because you don't know how to respond to that, if you already knew that that guy was good or that girl was good, and then they throw a big one, you're not surprised. You, so anything you can do to take out to to eliminate guesswork, the better. So know your competition. So being a fierce competitor is having that desire to win, no question about it. It's having technical competence, um, just knowing what you're doing, being good at it. It's having experience as a competitor, like com the more you compete, the better you get. Um, it's having a sound mind, having peace of mind, being chill, being relaxed, at the same time that you're also wildly competitive, they need to both be there, and then knowing your competition. And I think th those are the things that give you the killer mindset. It's a whole package. It's not just like, okay, I'm a killer, killer thrower today. Um, it's it's who you are. That if you look at great, great, great competitors, they are just sound like a rock, and that's the kind of person you want to be. And as you become that, uh, you're going to become a better competitor, throw farther. Then those moments where the it's super exciting, really intense, will lift you up. Because if you don't have a sound mind and things get intense, a lot of times we go down, we get negative, and 
that that doesn't help us so far. So I hope this this helps. Um, competing is a big deal. It's it's why we train so much, and the more information you can have about how to become a good competitor, the better you can be. So yeah, good luck out there. See you in the next video.